Here's the uh, the feed dials on an 83 inch metric Monarch. They're both uh, inch and metric reading. It's uh, they're extremely extremely precision made. Very costly, I'm sure. I have no idea of the re replacement cost of this. Well, anyway, what I was going to talk about is uh, the crossfeed screw and uh, lubricating it. Um, the machine automatically lubricates just about everything in the apron and it even lubricates the dial. But uh, it does not lubricate the crossfeed screw. And the crossfeed screw is really hard to get to. I mean, I don't know, you almost have to take the machine apart, I guess, to get to it, to see it. But there's a fix for that. And uh, right here, see if I can hold this steady, I'm really shaky today. Too much coffee, probably. Right here is the binder bolt for the, the taper attachment. And this is normally left loose. You, that's, that's loose. And uh, it, it goes to a, a clamp that's around the, um, the crossfeed screw. And what, I, what I've done, this is my own invention, is I made a little brass cap here. And I'll take that off. And what I did was I drilled that, that binder bolt with a small drill clear through and then I sunk a uh, ball end mill in there I sunk it down a little bit so it has edges and I made that little brass cap to cover it so to oil the crossfeed screw all I got to do is take that cap off and drip some oil in there and, mo and move the, the, the cross slide back and forth and it's oiled but there's no automatic oiling for the crossfeed screw on the Monarch 10EE Okay, put that back on now. Now there's an adjustment for backlash on the screw. And uh, it's one of the craziest things, the way this works. is uh, <clears throat> just to the right of the binder bolt there that I drilled is, um, boy, I shake it. Let's see if I hold it like that against something. Well, there's a retaining screw for the crossfeed nut. And believe it or not, to take up the slop, you know, the backlash and the crossfeed nut, this other, this other uh, screw here pushes down on it and actually tilts, tilts the nut instead of a split nut thing like on the axle and uh, Lodge and Shipley power turns and others. Uh, it, it, it seems kind of weird, but it works. Okay. So... Anyway, it's very nice to get uh, lubrication to that uh, cross feed screw that cost uh, with the nut probably a couple thousand dollars. You want you want to keep that oil. Okay, now on the adjustment, what you want to do, and, and this is from experience too, decades of dealing with these things. Um, you want to adjust that cross feed nut so it shows only ten marks. On the uh, on the dial before before the uh, cross slide moves either direction, you can set it tighter, but I guarantee you it's going to wear and it's going to end up right at ten, and it'll stay there for a long time. So just set it at ten. Don't put any undue wear on that nut. And it'll stay like that for a long time, especially if you lubricate the screw every time you use the machine. Okay, now I'm going to get a little bit into uh, uh, towards the direction of uh, actually using this thing and uh, the industry standard pretty much uh, for a machine like this and uh, 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 over here is a more jig bore. See that sucker right there? Well, the standard accuracy from the factory on that thing is plus or minus 80 millionths of an inch. Just a little less than a tenth. Well, you're going to get the same thing out of this thing on diameter if you learn how to use it. You can hit plus or minus 
80 millionths on a piece of pre-hard 4140. Now that's really nice if you want to fit a grade 9 Barden bearing. You know, and you can do that without sanding the part and all that stuff. But there's a lot of tricks to be able to, uh, to, be able to hold that tolerance consistently. And, uh, you know, I, I can guide you a little bit, but uh, you, you, have, you have to bring yourself to a level of experience, you know, that you're going to be able to utilize a machine like this. And uh, I suggest watching Blondie Hacks and have Quinn teach you how to do it, and then do this. Because you're not going to do it on your own. I guarantee it. Okay, one of the things that happens when you're doing high precision work on a machine like this is stick slip on the cross slide and the screw. And what that is is the whey oil kind of holds the, uh, the stuff back. So when you're advancing the cross slide, um, there's some tension still there. And what will release the, that tension is starting the machine. You start the machine up and that tension's released. If you set it, if you set it at a certain deal here, when you start the machine, that thing's gonna, gonna go forward a very small amount, but we're talking about working less than a tenth of a thousandth. So, so what you have to do, when you adjust the cross slide for a cut, you do it with the machine running only and let it sit for a second and let that settle out. Now you can see that with a digital readout, but I find digital readout hard to work, just, just hard for me to use, I have to crane my neck up. But right across the workpiece here, uh, I got this uh, dial indicator here, it's, it reads intense, and uh, I can set that, and I, I, I use that for the final um, finishing cuts. You can use the DRO too. But one of the things you'll see is if you uh, adjust this cross slide, set that, you know, with the indicator to zero, and you start this machine, you'll see that jump forward, half a tenth anyway. Maybe two tenths, I don't know. Not two tenths, but a quarter tenth. So, <clears throat> that's kind of... Uh, some kind of basic stuff here about about the machine. It, it, you know, you would think they'd automatically uh, oil the cross feed screw, but they decided not to. As a matter of fact, I think they decided not to oil it at all. I don't know. I, I never really figured that one out. Okay. A little look at stuff. I still haven't moved this carriage. I, I'm... Uh, going to do the module sometime today and uh, I don't want to move it. I, I, I want to pump it up with oil. Get the machine running and pump that carriage up because it, it's stuck good. And I can move it but it's going to tear microscopic bits of metal out because it's wrung to the ways. Yeah, that's kind of how that is. Oh, over here Here's the old machine. Ah, I got junk all over the floor. This place is torn up because of that drill press. I used every tool I owned to work on that thing and the stuff scattered all over. I have to spend a half a day to pick everything up from that disaster. Yeah, it's the old uh, um, uh, manufacturing way. And the, you know, I, I don't keep a tarp over this thing. I use the crap out of it. That, that uh, the toolmaker way, you know, I keep a tarp on it. You don't want dust on that thing. You know, this thing here has been around. But the, the beauty of this one is it's easy to uh, oil the cross feed screw, and I'll show you. You take and crank it all the way out. Look at that. You're going to stop, then you can shove it. Shove it forward. It won't come off because I got it too close to the wall. See, there's <laughs> there's the cross feed screw there. Yeah, oil the crap out of it. It's got a lot of oil on it. 
Yeah. Now this is the same. I, I, I set it so it, you know, it, it reads ten thousandths on the dial before, you know, it catches and move, moves either direction. It, it, they just want to stay there. This is very simple, kind of like a 9 inch south bend or something, you know, there's no taper attachment or anything. You can pull this thing back and stab it in, I'll do that later. Yeah, that's that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought you might find some of this kind of fun. You know. You spend a big chunk of money, uh, around $150,000 for something like this now. You want to take care of it. Okay, let's see how this goes here. 